on the first episode of Creating Tactics, I explain why you need a certain breed of player to control space. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about compression and how you can achieve that in the game using team instructions. My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. On the previous video that I did, I explained the kind of players that you need in order to control certain zones on the pitch. On today's video, I'm going to take a look at team instructions and explain how you can use team instructions to define those areas of the pitch. Now, if these are the kind of videos that you like and you want to see more of these kind of videos, hit the like and the subscribe button and stay notified because it does help the channel and it helps you as well. Let's talk about compression. Right, you can achieve lateral compression, which is compression on the sides, with the use of defensive width. Now, if you force the opposition outside, basically you're playing narrow in defensive width. So your players are actually closer together, opening up space down the flanks. When that happens, you are actually congesting the middle of the pitch and making your attack, your formation compressed in the middle because you're causing congestion over there. When you force the opposition outside, basically... Um, you're tackling down the flanks, you're opening up play in the middle, you're not so congested in the center anymore. When you played in the on the standard instruction, well, then your side treats both the flanks and the center equally. Vertical compression is actually influenced by your line of engagement. The lower your line of engagement is to your defensive line, the more compressed your system is. When you play with a low line of engagement, you cause vertical compression. Essentially, what you're doing is you're telling your team to stay compact, and then wait to close down the opposition when they enter your third. When you play with a much higher line of engagement, you're basically telling your team to start pressing the moment the opposition starts to build play out from the back, and then you start closing them in the opposition third. Now, the defensive line becomes very important when you talk about vertical compression, because the moment your defensive line is very low and your line of engagement is very high, then your zone is actually very big. You're not, basically you're not doing any compression. What happens is your defensive line stays very close to your defense, uh, to your goal. Uh, they will not really support your midfield during that phase where you're trying to win the ball back and you might have gaps appearing all over the pitch. The other side of this is also when you win the ball back. Now, when you win the ball back, because your back line is so close to goal, the distance between them and midfield is quite far, so they're not really in a very good position to support transition plays from defense through to midfield to, to through to attack. When you play with a much higher defensive line, with a much higher line of engagement, this is what we would think of in terms of final third compression, where you are trying to put a, apply pressure in the opposition third. Now, if I wanted to make a system vertically very compressed, I would drop the line of engagement to lower, for example, where I try to win the ball in my third with a higher defensive line, where my back line is going to try and support the midfield high up the pitch to try and win the ball back. This makes us very compressed. This is a strategy some teams might consider if they wanted to play with a middle block where they want to draw the opposition out to midfield and then hit them on the transition and try and go for quick counter basically there are three safe ways you can do compression in the game you can do final third compression which is a much higher defensive line with a higher line of engagement in the opponent's third then you have something like a middle block you can either try and win the ball in midfield or just inside your half and then decide how high up the pitch you want your back line to be to support all this but by adjusting your defensive line and then of course we have the sam allardyce block yes a much lower line of engagement with the standard defense line or even a lower defensive line because you have to remember the lower your defensive line the less likely your back line is going to support your midfield as well and then with really low lines of engagement then you are actually opening yourself up to set pieces and long shots these are things you might want to bear in mind if you want to go that deep however playing that deep with a structure system may not be that bad because you've got a lot of players sitting in your third all you need are two strikers up top who are fast and can get away and you'll be depending on breaking offside traps from monday to sunday the final piece of the puzzle is actually the offside trap now whether or not the offside trap is relevant in the modern game remains uh to be seen because uh numbers are showing that the number of offsides in the most of the leagues they're actually going down 
the last World Cup had about three per game compared to 1990 where we had nine offsides per game. So yes, the offside trap. That's a debate for another day. Anyway, if you wanted to use the offside trap in the game to apply compression, you'd be using it with a higher defensive line. The use of this is to make the space behind the defensive line unplayable. Then we come to pressing intensity. Yes, we have a team slider that affects the whole team and we have individual pressing instructions that we can adjust for individual players. And we also have roles that have uh, pressing intensity maxed out. So players can react differently to pressing intensities. Now, if you're, you're playing compressed, maybe in the final third or in the lower third, and you have your pressing intensity meter set to maximum, what do you think happens? Don't be surprised if more than two players go and close down another player or space opens up in your final third. These are things that you want to be careful of when you are using pressing intensity, which is a reason whenever I create my zones, I'm actually paying attention to my players, making sure that not no more than one player goes to close down another player. And if there is a situation where more than two players go to close down, I pay a lot of attention to the roles and any individual instructions that I may have given those players. Here we have a tactic submitted by one of our users on Discord, and he's struggling to beat teams that are better than him. His team roles pass all the weaker teams, but whenever he meets stronger teams, they take advantage of the flanks. Now, there is, um, it's pretty easy to understand why this is happening. If we look at the out of possession instructions, the out of possession instructions indicate that he's very aggressive in the final third. He's playing with a much higher defensive line, you know, committing those wing backs even higher up the pitch during transitions. With an extremely urgent press, more than one player might go, you know, closing down a target, especially on the right flank where we have a ball winning midfield on support with a wing back. This coupled with the overlap instructions encourages these wing backs even higher up the pitch and their mentality is probably going to be very attacking. They are going to be taking lots of risks as they bomb down the flanks. This is dangerous for a team because if they were to lose the ball anywhere in the final third during a transition, then space opens down the flanks and they could be vulnerable to the counter-attack, which is exactly what's happening to him in matches that he plays with Real Madrid, with Barcelona or Liverpool. This could be a relatively easy fix. The wing-back on attack is better suited to be on the right flank where there's a ball-winning midfielder on support, and the wing-back on support can be moved to the left flank. One could also remove the two overlap instructions as these are not necessary in the system because they are just aggravating the risk level against better sides. You could also drop the defensive line down to higher and play with a higher line of engagement. Finally, instead of playing with an extremely urgent press, perhaps more urgent pressing, which is just one notch down, would be more suitable for this team. So the next time you want to create a tactic, the first thing you should think about it are your players. Like, you know, what kind of zones can your players control? Here with Nottingham Forest, I know we aren't a uh, top side we we can't possibly play in our opponent's halves and win the keep the ball there neither are we good enough defensively for us to play a low block because my defenders aren't that fantastic in the air so i have resolved to play in the middle of the pitch where i'm hoping that i can congest the space in the middle you know win the ball while the other team is trying to build play up in midfield and hit them on the break and it's proven successful this season well, I hope you found today's video useful. It's a concept I really wanted to get across um, and I want to try and help people understand why compression is so important with, you know, in the first video, we dealt with the players that you need to help you control zones. In this video, I spoke about how you can define the zones and how these zones can influence your football. Now, in future videos, I will be talking about role and duty combinations. Yes, how we can generate the kind of football <laughs> that we want to see on the pitch. And if you enjoy these kind of videos, please hit the like and the subscribe button and stay notified for more videos like this. Once again, I would like to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this channel, all my friends on the Discord channel. I hope you're having a fantastic start to the year. And everybody out there, my best wishes go out to all of you. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.